This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on government's efforts to empower the girl child. The participants are Dr. Preetam B. Yashwant, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Women and Child Development and Anubha Rohatagi, Anchor. Women and girls make up half of the world's population and yet gender disparity is still a major global issue. To address this issue of girls' rights, the unique challenges they face as well as to promote girls' empowerment, October 11th has been celebrated as the International Day of the Girl Child since 2011. To discuss this issue, I'm now joined by Dr. Preetam B. Yashwant, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Women and Child Development. Dr. Yashwant, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Anubha. So before we talk a little more in detail about this program, this day and the government initiatives to promote empowerment of the girl child, I would like to ask from you, what is the significance of celebrating the International Day of the Girl Child? See, Anubha, see, working for the betterment of girls and women, especially as part of the Women and Child Development Ministry and the government of India as a whole and all the governments of the states and union territories is a continuous and daily process both with governments and civil society. Having said that, there has to be, it's always good to have a day in which we focus, we think, we look at an introspect about all the work that has been done, that the gaps that exist, what our girls and women have to say and recalibrate and move forward. So in that context, we have the 11th October celebrated as the International Girl Child Day. In India, in this time, across the nation, we had a 10-day wide nation celebration in which all the states and union territories enthusiastically participated under the banner of very successful program, the Beti Bachao Beti Padao, which was, as you all know, launched about a decade ago by the call to the nation by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. And in this time also, across the country, we had a lot of uh, stakeholders, communities engaged in discussions about the challenges that they still exist, the, the initiatives that are in play, what are their gaps, what could be done better. Also, very innovative programs done at the grassroots levels with school-going children and girls, especially with selfies with your daughters, the Kanya Pujan ceremonies, health camps, seminars, sports events. All these activities were done just to bring a renewed focus on the questions that are at stake for the betterment of girls and women. You just mentioned the very significant initiative of the government, the Beti Bachao Beti Padhao initiative, like which you rightly said was launched way back in 2015. How has the scheme helped in improving the girl sex ratio and in also bringing about an awareness about the importance of the girl child and the importance of girls education? I must tell this is one of the large scale uh, social and behavioral change campaign which has seen significant success. The root of the issue is what about mindsets? It's about a negative attitude towards a girl child and which is obviously linked to female feticide and resultant of a very poor sex ratio at birth. But 10 years since the Beti Bachao, Beti Padao program, the campaign was launched, India has seen an improvement in the sex ratio at birth from 918 to 930, which is a very significant improvement. So we can, we are very happy to see that there has been a shift in the mindset and there is a respect and there is a celebration for a girl child. So that I would say has been very the success of this program. Here, let me share with our listeners that according to the Unified District Information System for Education data, the gross enrollment ratio of girls at secondary level improved from 77.45 in 2014-15 to 81.32 in 2018-19 as per provisional figures, which is indeed a very heartening figure. Moving on, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has allocated more than 3 lakh crore rupees in this year's budget across various ministries that will benefit women and girls, including setting up of working women hostels, creches and women-specific skilling programs. This shows the government's commitment to enhancing women's role in economic development. Can you tell us more about this initiative and how this budget is going to help? See, the government's commitment is real and it is in complete measure. The government has focused on a 360 degree approach to addressing all needs that women and girls need to progress. That is why this largest budget. And I must tell all your listeners that this is the largest gender budget in the history of this country. And where and why is the there such a large allocation and what does it aim to do? I must tell all of you that to realize the goal which the Honorable Prime Minister has given us all of the 
to have a Viksit Bharat or a developed Bharat by 2047, post participation should be at least 50%. As on date, it starts stands at 37%. Here too, I must inform all our listeners that it has shown a very significant improvement from 23% about a decade ago to 37% now. But uh, if the female labor force participation reaches about 50%, it has a direct impact of 1-2% on the GDP growth of the nation as a whole. So these budgetary allocations are towards the programs which many of us already know, like Beti Bachao, Beti Padao, Swachh Bharat, the Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana, the Pradhan Mantri Mantra Vandana Yojana, the Mudra Yojana, the PM Avas Yojana, Jandhan Yojana, the so many of these programs, as you can see, they cover myriad of interventions, whether it is financial inclusion, whether it is self-help groups and ability to start small businesses, whether it is the availability of easy loans, and further on, whether it is programs in which scholarships are given to promising young women who want to pursue higher studies. So in all aspects, there is some or the other support that government is affording to women to realize their dreams. And the specific thing which you mentioned was that in this whole exercise for the female labor force participation, it is essential that women have to be freed from the unpaid care work with which they are entrenched in their homes for taking care of children and the elderly. For that, the Palna scheme or the crash scheme across the country is being strengthened and expanded so that women can come out of their homes and pursue their dream. Another important piece which needs to be fit in is to make available safe transportation and safe living environments uh, for women who are away from home for work. That is working women hostels. That is a point of very important focus in the Ministry of uh, Women and Child Development. And that scheme is called the Sakiniva scheme, which is also in a stage of expansion. Can you also mention, because I was listening to your Hindi discussion, there was a Spalna scheme and all. Can you just expand a little bit more things that you mentioned then? Is there anything you would like to add? In the Palna scheme, I think the piece which I said was to free a woman from unpaid care work at home to come out is the crash scheme, which right. is Palna scheme. Safety is a major concern for women and girls. So what are the measures that the government is taking to address this very important issue? Any woman, any girl, for that matter, any citizen would easily realize that all other facilities being provided for advancement in their lives, education or skilling or employment opportunities given to women and girls would not succeed if there is not a complete safety blanket under which they are protected. So the government in the last 10 years has done some large scale efforts to increase, expand and strengthen this safety net, especially under the Nirbhaya Fund. The Nirbhaya Fund was started about a decade ago with only about two projects at that time has expanded to run 48 projects, many of which are completed, many of which are underway with a total outlay of about 10,000 crores. Now, these projects cover broadly both two broad aspects. One is safe environment and second aspect is safe or the speedy justice for those who have been wrong. When you see the safe environment area, the most important interventions which come to mind are the emergency response support system, which is our 112 call center run by the Ministry of Home Affairs, which is a call it is a call which gives you immediate help by a police vehicle within 15 to 20 minutes. That's the average response rate across the country. Then there is the one-stop center for a woman in need who is in distress, who has been subject to violence. Immediate care being afforded in every district across the country, we have one-stop centers. Then we have the women helpline, which is a 24-7 helpline. It's a short code 181, which can be accessed by women and girls across the country for any questions that they may have, either informative or relating to the recourse they should take if they are subject to any kind of distress or violence. In addition, safe environments have been created under Safe City Project. About eight cities, metro cities across the country have had so many interventions under the Nirbhaya scheme. And the interventions range from women, police women led special teams to protect women, safe city transportation, lighting of dark spots for making it more safer to, for women to move in the cities at night, or CCTV cameras and central command control centers and so on. 
Also, we have the safe railway stations intervention under the Nirbhaya 2. Several railway stations now have CC cameras and facial recognition systems to identify criminals who are registered in the national database. Then, on the other hand, if at all women are unfortunately subject to any violence or any distress, then when they take recourse to the court of law, we need to have a speedy justice system because justice delayed is justice denied. Following that dictum, under the Nirbhaya Fund, we have put in place across the country fast-track special courts to deal with only those cases which are related to crimes against women and girls. And lacks of cases which have been pending have been successfully resolved and disposed. Similarly, in sexual crimes against women, one important thing in investigation is the speedy investigation, without which cases linger on in the courts for a long time. So under the Nirbhaya Fund, all across the country, in every state, there are forensic units which have been established. There is a state-of-art national forensic lab established in Chandigarh. There are women help desks in every police station of the country, almost all of them. And these are some of the interventions. Of course, there is a lot to be done. And uh, it is not that the job is over, but the government is putting its best foot forward and it continues to improve the women's safety net. Dr. Yashwant, before we wind up this program, is there any message that you would like to give to our listeners on this occasion? All I would like to say that on this day, when we are celebrating the International Day for the Girl Child, it's, there is a message we should send to all citizens who are listening to this show, and especially to girls and women, that there is no avenue in public life or in any walk of life that a girl or woman would like to choose that is beyond their reach. And as we speak, we have women in all our defense forces and the first batch of fighter pilots have already passed through the national defense academy and we have we were proud to have women fighter pilots fly our fighter jets on the republic day parade and we have on the other hand in the area of stem which is science technology engineering mathematics were which were hitherto areas where beyond the reach of girls and women it was seemed to be a male bastion it is no more the case at least 43% of graduates in STEM in India are women. And uh, it is one of the best percentages for any country in the world. The space program of India, the successful Mangalyan, has also been led by uh, able women scientists. And similarly, in the rural areas, if you see, there are 100 million women of us who are connected with about 9 million women self-help groups, all ably standing on their own feet and trying to make a living on their own steam and contributing to the economy and to their own empowerment. So in whichever direction we see, women are making giant strides. And uh, I would like to end uh, this discussion of us by saying that uh, girls and women should not have any doubts about realizing the dreams. They should come forward. And as a society, it is our duty to ensure that every girl, every woman realizes the dreams that she has for herself and her family. Dr. Ishwan, thank you so much for speaking with Akashwani. Thank you, Anba. You were listening to a discussion on government's efforts to empower the girl child. The participants were Dr. Pritam B. Yashwant, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Women and Child Development, and Anubha Rotagi, anchor. This program was produced and presented by the New Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 